Welcome in the weekday sports bash head honcho, Mike Gill. What's up, Mike? Sully, and I can confirm that Josh will be on every Saturday from noon to all two. Right. Yeah, I guess I'll be talking a little bit about Muhammad Ali and uh, NBA playoffs, all that good stuff. Yeah, I saw that late last night with uh, the greatest of all time passing yeah, away. And uh, the NBA playoffs re- uh, finals return tomorrow night. Good stuff, man. Let's talk a little uh, high school baseball. I know you've uh, you've coached a lot of these guys that are involved in playoff games uh, through the Atlantic Shore Bay Brew team, and uh, it's got to be neat seeing these guys sort of come of age on the varsity level. You know, it's all it really is. Like back in 2011, you got a group of kids that you, you know. I mean, they're playing little league. You don't hear much about them other than a couple of weeks in the summer when they have this tournament, uh, and then we got a chance to coach them and. Uh, Nobody, when we stepped on that field, said, hey, this group of kids is going to go to the World Series. Well, that's exactly what happened, and that team had an unbelievable three-year run through their Babe Ruth years, and that carried over into their high school career. So many times, you always wonder, like, what happened to these kids? You know, here's a summer where they dominated the news, they went to the World Series, uh, they played all these games, and then what happened to them? A lot of times, you don't see a group of guys stick together and have that kind of success, and I thought you captured a picture that when I saw the picture of Kyle's race and Dean Davini, it was almost like a flashback of these guys playing together, since they, some of them since they were 9, 10 years old, and it all kind of coming to an end, and it really encapsulated, like, what, and then there's other kids other than the kids from Mainland, but what that group of kids, because there was a lot of kids that played for Mainland, and really attributed to the success that that program has had, uh, really rejuvenated that program and it really encapsulated what that group of kids really meant to baseball in this area. You figure a team won the World Series last year. How many teams were playing for group finals yesterday? Ocean City won one. Uh, Mainland's won two over the years. I think that group really should be given a lot of credit for kind of kickstarting what has become kind of a, a you know well-known baseball area all of a sudden. Yeah, and it's really it's kind of neat to see uh, Nick Atoy almost almost seamlessly just taking the torch and carrying it from Kyle Gerace. You, you kind of see in in uh, in this one little playoff run, uh, the the you know the the torch being passed from one guy to the next. And uh, you know I, I expect big things from Nick the next couple of years. He's he's got that pitcher's body, real tall, lanky, uh, throws hard. You know, good command of his breaking stuff and. Talk about that kid a little bit, and and what do you expect out of him going forward? I, I think he's going to have a career similar to Kyle Gerace's. Yeah, and it's you know I had Nick uh, when he was a thirteen, and then he was part of the team that won the World Series last year. And you're right, you know this group has just left. They've been there for so long, you know Gerace, and before that Drobenek and Lufflad, and you have Matt Thomas and Davini that were all together for so long, and some of them moved on, or uh, you know a year early. And now it's really cool to see them kind of have that next group come up. And, you you know, I hope there's a challenge between guys like Sharky and Atoy to say, look, we want to accomplish more than that group did. They, they did win a World Series at the Babe Ruth level, so they've already accomplished that. Uh, we'll see how much more they can accomplish than this group. But, you know, Nick's a great kid. He, he, uh, it's funny because he's still playing Babe Ruth. He's 15, so he's still in the league. Yeah, he's a real young sophomore. (laughs) Yeah, that group of kids is trying to make another run. Um, And, you know, you hear so much about him. It's funny, he pitched a game in the playoffs last week and won 4-1 to against Lacey, and he played against my team the same night uh, for Northfield, and we beat them. (laughs) You know, like him and Sharky are still playing Babe Ruth. So it's great to see all the kids stay together. And I think that's what's so unique about, you know, the Babe Ruth League is that they get to stay together as friends and continue to play as friends, and then you know you see it kind of carry over to the high school level. And you know the one thing that I think stands out with this whole situation, like Kyle Gerace, his parents, you know, great people, uh, Craig and Lisa, who I've known you know since he came up as eleven, and they always thank us. So you can tell that he was you know a great kid. But at thirteen years old, no one was going to pick Kyle Gerace out as the kid that. Hey, that kid's going to be the one that goes to Division One. You just never know, and right. I hope that kind of is a sign to the parents out there who, you know, they pay so much money for these kids to be on these showcase teams and all these teams, and it's like hey, you're not getting looked at at 13, 14, and 15 years old. As good as Nick Toy is, he's 15. He's a tall guy, so he might stand out in a crowd, 
But there's been a lot of guys that come in with a blaze of glory at 14, 15 years old, and then they don't work at it. You got to work at it. That's the key. At 15, 16, you got to start hitting that work and, and, and hope that you know you hit that next level. 14, 15, you might be the best player in the area, and you know by 16, you might fizzle out. I've seen that happen so many times. Sure, yeah. And I think you know a guy like Jerry's is a perfect example. At 13, you know he was a quiet little guy who he was a really good player, but no one would have picked him out. I, I personally would not have said that was the guy who was going to stand out and go Division One. Uh, I think one of the really interesting points uh, I wanted to make as well is, you know, you talk about these Babe Ruth teams and playing so well in the summer. uh, Because they play so well, they play so many games because they keep advancing in these tournaments. And what you see from that is you see hitters uh, getting a lot more at-bats than a a normal kid might in the summertime. And you see the advancement of these kids when they take their at-bats in high school, particularly a, a kid like Devin Sharkey. I mean, here's a kid as a freshman get called gets called up late in the season of varsity, and he's having at bats that where he looks like a senior, where he's you know he's taking a curveball on the outside with two strikes that's maybe four inches off the plate, uh, like it's no big deal. You know, most freshmen will be swinging out of their shoes on that and striking out. You know, and that is the advancement of baseball. You know, we talk about the Babe Ruth. You know, the AAU is also a, a factor in this area, and a lot of kids are playing extra baseball, and it's been. I think you see where. It has helped on the offensive side. We get these kids that play for us on Atlantic Shore, and they are hitters. I mean, they come in and they swing, 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 and they know how to hit. Um, you know, and that is something we've definitely seen the change over the years. There's a lot of these kids. Now, the 2011 crew, a lot of those guys did not play. You know, they played a little AAU, but not a whole heck of a lot. They really focused on, you know, once they were past 13, they kind of said, you know what, we just, we just kind of want to do this and stick together. But a lot of kids are doing the AAU, which is great because they're getting the extra swings. I think where it's, you know, hurts a little bit is for the pitchers because they're getting pulled all over the place. Yeah, you're pitching two innings here, you're pitching two innings there, you're pitching one inning over there. Um, so I think the pitchers are having a tough time trying to, you know, figure out where I can get my innings in. But because of that, you can see these kids. You're right. I talked to uh, Billy Kern one time about probably about a month ago, and he told me, you know, Sharky can play varsity right now. I just have a senior team i have no place to put them and then right. somebody got hurt and he ended up getting a chance but that's how advanced a kid like devin sharky was and there's a lot of kids uh, from that group <clears throat> excuse me that are 15 years old they got some varsity baseball time you know frankie Curtin. a lot of people um you know he's not on the mainland team he plays at atlantic high and he started on the world series team last year he plays for me and ventner he got some varsity time this year as a 15 year old <laughs> you look at uh there's other guys on that team that are sprinkled all over the area that uh, at 15 years old to play varsity baseball is a pretty uh, you know a pretty big accomplishment. Uh, we're talking with Mike Gill of the uh, Sports Bash, talking about some uh, Atlantic Shore baseball and high school baseball. And Mike, another thing that that really uh, you know an impression I took away from from this year's playoffs and, and even last year was uh, the level of maturity of these guys from playing so much baseball and being in pressure situations. I mean, you see a kid like Jerase respond under pressure. Drobenik last year. Uh, you know, a kid like Steve Myers having great at bats. You know, leading to Cal and hitting. Uh, all these guys, they're used to being in big spots, and that that can go a long way in high school baseball. Because when you get down to these playoffs, these pressure situations, that's a lot on the shoulders of of a sixteen, seventeen year old kid. When you got two hundred fans out there, you know, expecting you to get a hit in a big situation, and these guys seem to rise to the occasion. You know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with just playing in so many big games and, and being in that spot so many times before. Yeah, I think you wrote an article about Juris last year when he was on the mound, and he said, look, I, there was a game in Atlantic Shore when I was in the World Series, and I got called in to be a reliever. You're up on that stage at 13 years old, and that carries with you. you know. Then you do it again at 14. Uh, they made it to the regional finals. Then they went back to the World Series as 15-year-olds. By the time they got to high school, it was like, you know, you're not going to put me in a situation that I really haven't been in before. And Nick Atoy, Sharkey, uh, you know, Brandon Lashley over at Ocean City, Vanderslice, uh, Montalion, all those kids that played on that team last year. I played last a couple of nights ago. I had a game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're playing a game, and I'm looking around. I'm thinking, my God, look at all these kids on this, these on these fields that of what they've accomplished already. And then you're reading about mainland playing Ocean City, and you're thinking, man, I can't even imagine what the next group of battles is going to be like because there's so much talent around here, and they are so poised. Like, they've been in so many big games, and I think you've been reading about mainland and Ocean City 
the last couple of years, you're going to continue to hear about them, but I think it's spreading uh, around, too, that more kids. You know, the one thing is the numbers problem. You know, we've got a big numbers problem in right. terms of kids just aren't playing anymore. Like, uh, the, the league, Atlantic Shore, is in – a uh, numbers problem is it's a because one of the problems is the kids aren't playing little league. It's at the lower levels that they're just not playing anymore, and they're not coming all the way through, uh, with it, which is coming down the pipeline. So hopefully, the, the the parents and the kids are reading the newspaper and seeing how much success these kids are having, and do it for the right reasons. Do it to have fun and camaraderie. The better players will rise to the top. The kids who want to work hard will rise. But let the kids play and just have fun and be friends and hang out and do something together instead of trying to push a guy because, you know, you hear the Mike Trout effect and stuff like that. The best players, they'll rise. People will find them. You don't have to, you know, do extra things uh, to go out there and try to put them in front of people. Because keep in mind, Sully, (coughs) excuse me, uh, you could hurt a kid by putting him in front of somebody too early and then someone saying, you know what, that kid's no good. Right. And then they never want to go back and take a look at him. So if you put a guy, a kid in front of a guy at 14, 15 years old, and he's not really matured yet, you could hurt that kid's opportunity to get looked at down the road as well because maybe someone just says, ah, that kid's no good, and then he sprouts up at 16, 17, and the guy says, I already saw that kid two years ago. He was nothing. Well, hopefully you'll see uh, even more interest in baseball uh, over the next couple of years you know, because of guys like Trout and, and because uh, of how good the Cape Atlantic League and, and the other leagues in South Jersey have been the last couple of years. And you know, you see an event like we had a couple weeks ago with uh, Jason Groom and Tyler Mondale going at it, you know, draws 6,000 fans. I mean, hopefully you know, kids will want to be a part of something like that. That's a good point. You, know, you see you know, kids from this area that are getting talked about, not only for college now, you know, college race going to Rutgers. Uh, you look at kids that are also getting talked about to get drafted, and you got uh, guys up and down this area that are now going to be talked about getting drafted or going uh, to Division One schools. I don't remember a time, you know, certainly when I was playing, which wasn't all that long ago, but playing with guys that were constantly, like, when we go back and talk about our years of playing, we can name, like, two guys that we ever faced that were drafted or, uh, you know, playing uh, college baseball. It just didn't happen as much back then, but the Trout – situation what it did do was bring scouts to the area it allowed scouts to say you know what i need to make that drive now to that pocket and go find people and you know with jerry's he really stood out as a sophomore and he pitched that game as a sophomore and that kind of put him on the map he you know and then after that obviously as a junior he was dominated and then he signed so you could have that one game in your high school career that really stands out and get kind of gets you some notoriety and I think that's one of the things about that group. They all stuck together and continue to play high school. How many times do you see a group of kids that, you know, they play Little League together, then they're 13, and the kids start fading off at 14 and 15. They have other interests. This group of guys stayed together and played baseball together from 2011 to 2016. It's pretty crazy. Good stuff, Mike. We're up against the break. we got to make some time for uh, the Courier Post boys. So, uh, thanks for taking a few minutes, and enjoy the rest of the weekend, buddy. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, pal. All right. Thanks, Mike. That was Mike Gill of the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. Check it out every weekday, 2 to 6 p.m.